Hey, Caitlin, uh, just wanted to cover chapters 10 and 11 with you, medical speech language pathology and special topics in speech language pathology. So um, the first thing, let's talk about medical speech language pathology. It includes disorders that are neurophysiologically based. They are all are communicative disorders um, except for dysphagia. Uh, the ones that we're going to talk about today are aphasia, motor speech disorders, apraxia, dysarthia, right hemisphere syndrome, dementia, traumatic brain injury, and dysphagia. So what is aphasia? Aphasia is a language disorder that affects almost all aspects of social communication and participation. It is due to recent brain injury and caused by such neurological events as strokes and tumors. Motor speech disorders and apraxia are speech disorders that result from central or peripheral nervous system damage. There are two major categories, apraxia and dysarthia. Apraxia, um, it's a neuromuscular disorder of sequence movement of body parts in the absence of muscle weakness and paralysis. And dysarthia is um, a group of motor speech disorders due to paralysis, weakness, or incoordination of the speech muscles due to central or peripheral nervous system lesions. So you're looking at strokes and Parkinson's may cause it. Also traumatic brain injury. Um, right hemisphere syndrome is a collection of neurological and behavioral impairments that follow damage to the right hemisphere. Um, causes include things like strokes, tumors, traumatic brain injuries, uh, to the right side of the brain. Um, things that you'll get with this are like uh, disorientation, impaired attention and memory, failure to recognize familiar faces, difficulty expressing or recognizing emotions, impaired reasoning, planning and organizing skills, um, and inappropriate verbal responses. The next one we're going to talk about is dementia. Dementia refers to intellectual deterioration and associated uh, negative changes in behavior. Um, things you're looking at are like neurodegenerative uh, diseases like Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's. Um, it may be reversible or irreversible, and that is depending on what certain infections and diseases or uh, syndromes have caused it. Um, the next one up is uh, traumatic brain injury. It is a collection of symptoms that follow injury to the brain by an external force. Um, causes include auto accidents, falls, industrial or workplace accidents, child abuse, and interpersonal violence. There are two types, penetrating and non-penetrating. Um, cognitive deficits, including memory problems, communication deficits, confused language, difficulty in language comprehension and speaking, reading and writing difficulties may be present. Uh, next up, we have dysphagia. And that is a disorder of swallowing food and liquids. SLPs treat the disorder with oral and pharyngeal faces uh, through direct and indirect treatment. Medical management is essential. So in chapter 11, we're going to talk about special topics in speech language pathology. Uh, the first topic that we're going to talk about is cerebral palsy. Um, it's an early childhood disorder. It's a complex set of muscular and communication problems due to a brain injury. Uh, <clears throat> Kids with cerebral palsy have delayed language, uh, um, acquisition, articulation, hearing impairment, visual problems, behavior, and epilepsy may be associated with cerebral palsy. Um, autism spectrum disorders. Um, it's a pervasive development disorder, impaired social behavior, problems in communication. Um, some things that are on the spectrum are... Dr. Sapir, can you come to the office, please? Sorry Thank about you. That. Autism, Asperger's, Rett, childhood disintegrative disorder, um, speech and language disturb disturbances, echolasia, <clears throat> um, pronoun reversal, shorter, simpler sentences, very blunt responses. Applied behavioral analysis has been helpful in some cases. Um, the next one we're going to look at, intellectual disabilities. Previously, this was called mental retardation. It is limitation on intellectual functioning, deficient social behaviors or skills, inadequate daily living skills. ID is classified as mild, um, moderate, or severe, and those are based on IQ scores. So mild would be 50 to 70, moderate would be 35 to 55, and severe would be any IQ below 40. Uh, remember that your average IQ is 100. 
Language resembles that of younger children. It's delayed, limited. Um, a lot of times you'll have like pronoun confusion. Um, finally, we're looking at augmentative and alternative communication. So these are non-oral communication strategies that supplement existing but limited verbal skills. Those are augmentative. Um, non-oral communication strategies are primary means of communication that replace, if they replace oral speech, they're alternative. So augmentative adds to limited oral speech and alternative replaces oral speech. Unaided means that there are no external devices. So um, signs, gestures, facial expressions, uh, ASL, American Sign Language is a good example. Aided is the use of external devices. So books, boards, computers, iPads, um, any sort of speaking device would be um, an aided communication. They can be high, low, or no tech. That's all I have for you this week. Um, I'm going to upload your quiz, and I hope that you're safe. God bless.